Hello, I am not in my usual setting today. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's a bit looks a little bit different. Uh, it's a bit more just bland, isn't it? Yeah, um, that's because I'm back home in Solihull. I am not in London at the moment because I came all the way up to Birmingham to see the mighty Aston Villa layeth the smacketh down on Crystal Palace 1-0. And believe me, I'm still trying to catch my breath after sprinting from the Trinity Road stand all the way to Witten Station. Believe me, I ran so fast. If Tom Hanks had been there today, he'd have looked at me and gone, that guy has learned from Forrest Gump. That man has learned from the best. I ran like Forrest. I was getting there. And believe me, you don't want to be stuck in them queues. So uh, I'm very glad I did that, but now I'm right, kind of feeling it. But anyway, on to more important matters. Two wins in two now for Unai Emery. My goodness, the man. As you will know, if you listen to all Villa No Filler regularly, if you like and subscribe below and you subscribe to this channel, you'll have seen me talking about how much I love Professor Unai. Because whenever I see Aston Villa, I feel like I see a work in progress and I feel like I see a team that is going places and has a clear plan. Now, today at Villa, let's face it, Villa have been better away from home under Emery than they have at home in recent times. So I was kind of surprised to see Crystal Palace turn up and... So I was very low by the pitch. So I didn't really have that sort of, you know, that camera view angle. So I was low down. I could hear all the players, you know, talking to each other, you know, swearing at each other, all that sort of thing. It was great. I loved it. Um, but uh, from the angle I was sat, it looked to me like Crystal Palace tried to do what Villa do, 4-4-2. They tried to match up to us, which I thought was interesting because um, teams have hurt us in recent weeks by putting us under a lot of pressure um near our in our in our defensive third essentially when we were in possession but Villa I thought actually looked quite good playing it around at the back today now that may not be something people agree with I think yes we are going to continually look this season as if we have a mistake in us when we play it around at the back because ultimately yes we are a team in transition we're a team is still learning how to play like that and there will be mistakes along the way. We've already made a couple. At Leicester, against Leicester, we made one. Against Arsenal, we made a big one. You know, Odegaard missed that big chance. Um, against uh, Stevenage, of all teams, we, we made a mistake playing it around at the back. So those mistakes are going to come. But today, I thought there were signs where the players were really patient and they didn't resort to booting up the pitch. Because if Tyra Mings got the ball and just decided, Do you know what, instead of passing it to Alex Moreno or to Esri Concert or passing it to Ezra, uh, Emi Martinez, which retains the ball and we can start again, and tie a Crystal Palace out when they try and put us under pressure, he said, if he'd gone, Do you know what, I'm going to boot it right up the pitch, it's Ollie Watkins' head, well, guess what? Crystal Palace's big defenders are going to win it every time. So, um, you know, I, I saw on Twitter a little bit of reaction saying that it seemed watching it on TV that Villa were, the, the Villa part was quite um, impatient with playing it around the back. I actually didn't, that wasn't my experience in the stadium. So um, uh, sort of around where I was, it did seem like people were okay with it. There was a bit of panic. There were one or two occasions where I just looked at someone and I thought, hey, do you know what, you you probably just need to trust in Unai a bit more here and trust in the players. Um, and yes, there were one or two occasions where I thought uh, the, the crowd could have been a little bit more patient with it. Um, but ultimately, I thought um, it was fine, the reaction. And uh, generally, it could be more positive and it will get more positive as people hopefully get more used to us playing like this. But uh, I think Villa were, were patient at the back. And I, I don't think Palace caused as much problems for us in, you know, when they were putting us under pressure as, say, Everton did for a portion of the first half at Goodison Park, as Arsenal did. I think other teams are going to cause more problems for us than Palace did, really. I was quite surprised at how insipid Palace were. I didn't think there was a lot to them. Um, I, I didn't understand the way they used Eze. It felt to me like he was almost like a left winger. And uh, when we played them at Selhurst Park, he was much more involved in the centre of the pitch. And Eze, I thought, couldn't get into the game. Once the red card happened, Eze was moved central. And for about five minutes, when he got on the ball, I thought, oh, here we go. He's involved now. And he's done one or two nice touches. And then they took him off. And I was like, well, thank you, Patrick Vieira. I'll, I'll take that all day, every day. Um, you send Will Hughes on, please. Um, so I thought Palace, other than Wilfred Zaha having like a moment of inspiration in him, uh, I didn't think they offered much. I thought Elise, uh, one or two occasions, he, he did a nice cross field reverse pass, very good, but ultimately, it kind of well, it just didn't go anywhere. So, 
Um, Palace were not wasn't much to them, I thought. Solid, not easy to score against. I can see that, but in attack, uh, not they, they could be better. Um, but Villa, I thought we were quite patient on the ball. Um, there was a couple of occasions where there was some lovely build-up play from the back where it led to a big chance. One, two occasions. One was when the ball came to John McGinn, worked his way up to him in midfield, turned on his left, saw Matty Cash making the run down the right, threw ball to him. Matty Cash belts one across the area, and Ollie Watkins is there waiting to make it six and six, but uh, the Palace defender gets in ahead of him, and it's an own goal. Thank you. Take it all day. Um. It's worth mentioning from that first half that I think the teams were relatively even. Villa had much more possession and I think Villa just looked slightly better. Uh, I think a lot a lot of occasions where Villa were put under pressure, we handled it quite well. Didn't really make any mis- like glaring mistakes that I can really think of. Um, maybe one or two. And it felt like, yes, there is a mistake there. But um, we'll get better at that, I think, over time. Uh, so I, I, ju- I just thought... Um, yeah, the two formations playing against each other. I thought Villa was slightly better, and I think they deserve the goal. And Ollie Watkins really should have killed the game off just before half time with a glaring miss. You give him that, you know, he scored five in five. So you, you think, well, all right, you can you can have one big miss, but uh, yeah, that should have that definitely should have been two 0 But you also have to mention, you know, Palace had a goal disallowed. I was right in line with it, and I was convinced it was onside even when we went to VAR I was like nah this is this is onside I was looking around telling everyone that's nah, onside no way no way it was offside and then when it was given offside I said you see I told you I told you it was offside miles off miles off it must have been millimetres it was millimetres from the screen I saw um, we really got away with that one but you take it it was offside uh, so um, yeah I think we were largely dominant now if Emery was to be critical in the second half when they went down to 10 men, and we'll mention that in a second, the Decora tackle, uh, when they went down to 10, I think you'd say Villa should have killed them off. You know, I think he'll be disappointed we didn't do that. We should have made it two or three. And I think uh, McGinn had a chance that was well saved by the Palace keeper. Um, McGinn had another one where he slipped. And then a um, couple of occasions where Leon Bailey, once he came on, God, the man's erratic, isn't he? He's erratic. You you want more consistency. You're never going to get that from him, I think. Uh, he'd do something great and he'd be brilliant. And then, as usual, he'd do something where you thought, tearing your hair out, which is why my hair's probably all a bit all over the place right now. Um, let me just redo that there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right for you. Yeah. 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 All right for you. Um, but, but yeah, I think um, uh, Villa should have really killed them off. Um, we were. Largely in control when they had the red card. And I think we were largely in control for the whole game and deserved the win, really. Um, but uh, I think Yonder Ram, when he came on, it was interesting to see him in person. He's actually, he's he's bigger in person than, than he looks on TV, I thought. Big physical unit. And he had one moment today where he, well, two moments where he you know, laid it off, physically bullied the Palace defenders, big defenders, and 19 years of age, been doing that. That's really good stuff. Definitely a raw player. One occasion he brought the ball back, got into a good zone, and you thought, right, he's in the area now where you think, oh, pull it across. And he said he went for the shot, and it made me think, look, if that goes in, that's the be- one of the best goals you're ever going to see live. I kind of feel he's going to pull off, pull off one of them eventually. He's going to do something, uh, some wild shot from the most absurd angle that somehow is just going to fly in the top corner. So I'm kind of waiting for that, um, you know, that, uh, FIFA award winning goal to come. Uh, it looks like he has it in him. But Villa ultimately solid, another good win against a side that um, you would hope we would get points against. And if you look at Palace, in fairness to them, you know, you look at their recent games, they've had a tough run. You know, they played Liverpool, didn't concede, nil-nil. Played at Brentford, won all. I think Brentford equalised last minute. Played Brighton, their big, you know, local rivals. It's the big derby for them. Won all. Lost 2-1 at United. Nil-nil with Newcastle, one all Man United. They don't concede that many. So they're quite a solid side, Palace. So, you know, for Villa to win one nil, it's a good win. Good, solid win. We've needed a win like that, really, because we've been a bit wild at home, I think. Um, a little bit, you know, conceding a few too many 
uh, silly goals. Like we did, I think Leicester was a good example of that, and Arsenal as well. We conceded some silly goals. So um, yeah, I'm I'm happy um, with with a good solid win. And uh, next up, it's West Ham away. I'm more confident with how we are away from home than we are at home. Um, Palace losing four nil to uh, to Brighton was a bit of a surprise. I didn't expect that. Um, and uh, they're not in good form. They're fighting the relegation zone really. Um, I think we owe them one. We haven't. We don't tend to do very well against West Ham. There is the Danny Ings factor, so you'd expect him to have some say. But you know, we're off our away form under Emery is four wins and five. So why can't we go away and win? Why not? So look, good solid win. Um, look at where Villa are now. You know, three losses in a row, but we bounced back with two good solid wins, and now we're still level on points with uh, Chelsea. We're miles away from twelfth on twenty seven, which is Crystal Palace. Villa on 34 and 11. And we're looking up, you know, Brighton in eighth, 38 points, so four, four uh, points ahead of us. Um, so we're in a kind of middle zone where it's going to take a lot to catch up with the teams ahead of us and we ain't going to get sucked in with the teams behind us. So it's actually a good position because there's no pressure. It's a good position for Emery to be in at right at this stage because it's like I can aim for the top half of the table because that'd be a great end to the season. And there's no real pressure. There's no pressure to get anything. So we can just keep working at what he's working on without the pressure. So let's keep supporting them at Villa Park. I thought the atmosphere was really good in at long for long periods today. Whole end was rocking. Fantastic. Um, I, I loved it. I, loved, I love being at Villa Park. It's just, it's my place in it. It just, every, all the memories I have there and all the memories yet to be made there. So it was, it was brilliant. I loved it. And uh, yeah, it, you know, let's keep going onwards and onwards. Uh, on, onwards and onwards. Onwards and upwards under Professor Unai. It can only get better. I can see what he's doing. And when he makes some of the signings he wants in the summer, who knows what can happen? Dare we to dream of the Premier League title? I, I, won't, I won't dream of UEFA, Europa League. Dare we to dream. But also worth mentioning the tackle that on Bubakar Kamara. I was right next to it, um, right in front of it. I could not believe Decore made that tackle. It was, it was shocking. Like, it was... It was so unnecessary and so cowardly from behind. He was never, ever getting the ball. It just, it was either stupidity or it was um, frustration and he's taking it out on another player, which is shocking. It, that was a, it should have been a red card. It was, it was really, really bad tackle. And you could tell it as soon as I saw it, I was like, he's, he's not going to be right after this. No way. And then when, as soon as he, um, got up and couldn't stand on his foot. I was like, of course. And Ducora gets to play on, eventually gets red carded. But it was um that was a shocking tackle. And hopefully, you know, Emery said post match it could be a few weeks. I hope it's not months because uh yeah, that didn't look good when Kamara was walking off. Um at least he could walk, but he couldn't put a lot of pressure on his on his ankle. Um very bad tackle. Very bad. It's all good times at Villa. Let's stay positive and uh, a good win today. Up the Villa!